Welcome to Theobodium, and welcome to a conversation about sandbox survival games. I'm not sure if this genre is officially called sandbox survival games, but through looking it up I found lots of different names and I'm sticking with sandbox survival because it just seems to be the most easily fitting to the game type. Although some games I will mention in this video may be much more survival than sandbox or the reverse, the genre I'm focusing on is sandbox survival because I have a lot of experience with these games and it encompasses a large number of games. Which brings me to the point of this video. In this video, I aim to organize and classify the major game mechanics of sandbox survival games so that they can be compared to one another. This is not to determine which one is better, but rather to help anyone watching to see the primary focuses of different games so it is easier to find one that interests you. It's also just fun to talk about these games because I've played them a lot. So what am I classifying as sandbox survival games in this video? Simply put, games that are based on at least one of these three major components, survival, adventure, and building. To get more specific, when I say survival, I'm talking about the gameplay mechanics of hunger, which includes thirst, by the way, for games that have that, combat, the world or environment, and game-specific challenges. Adventure includes the gameplay mechanics of combat, exploration, story, and progress. The final category of building includes mechanics of creativity, combat, and also progress. To be clear, you do not need to know all of that complicated mess to understand this video. I have it here, so if you're interested, you can look at it more, and if not, then you can still get the general idea of what each major category is that I'm talking about. I will also mention the malleability of these games, which is just how much you can change the game before you even load up a world in the world settings and customization. I also want to point out that when categorizing all of this, I realized how similar sandbox survival games can be to a lot of RPG games like Skyrim. There are some big differences, but the games use similar game mechanics in many areas. Anyways, if you do like the way I've broken up what makes up sandbox survival games, feel free to join in with a comment and add anything I may have missed or got wrong. To start the conversation, of course, I want to give some examples. And what better example could there be than Minecraft? I think Minecraft almost perfectly balances all three of the categories. Its survival is not incredibly difficult once you get the basic needs met. However, if you have an itch for a relaxed survival game, then Minecraft will most likely scratch it. And it isn't done there, because if you want more of a challenge, then you can enter the nether, or go further and try and slay the ender dragon, or use some of the game's malleability to play on hardcore for even greater stakes. If survival isn't your thing though, then maybe adventure is. Minecraft has incredible opportunities for exploration due to its randomly generated infinite and very diverse worlds. Its story didn't exist when the game first came out and honestly isn't incredible, but the exploration is incredible enough to have your own adventure with. Progress also contributes, but not as much in the sense of progressing to the end of the game, as much as it contributes in the sense of you progress on your own goals you set for yourself, like building projects. The combat isn't exceptionally challenging in the game, but is certainly entertaining to most. But maybe adventure isn't what you're looking for either. If not, then the building might grab your interests, with its limitless bounds of what you can create as long as it is blocky. This game is absolutely incredibly creative. Honestly, the building for progress, like building nether portals, isn't a huge factor, However, progress on your own projects is a big factor. Building weapons, armor, and shelter, which is what I've referred to as the combat building mechanic, is easy to work, but not a major driving force behind the game. The pure creativity of the building is the driving force behind the building of the game as a whole. So, my point is that Minecraft has exceptional balance between the three major categories I'm using here. No matter what you love about sandbox survival games, Minecraft most likely has that for you. Also, people typically love it so much not just because of one of those categories, but because of how well you can enjoy them all together with their incredible balance. But let's be honest, most of us who love sandbox survival games love them because of Minecraft, or at least we were introduced to them because of Minecraft, and most of the sandbox survival games of today would not exist, or at least not in the same way as they currently do, without Minecraft. So let's move on to another game. The next example is Seven Days to Die. Now, Seven Days to Die is a game that has been in early access for over seven years, and is still unpolished in many areas, so whether or not this is a good game is up to your personal opinion. But it's in this video because it is a perfect example of a sandbox survival game that is extremely focused on the survival mechanics of the game. Again, whether or not that's a good thing is for you to decide for yourself, but needless to say, this game does not have the same balance that Minecraft does. In seven days, survival is everything. When talking about the hunger mechanics, you already have a lot more intricacy going on than many other sandbox survival games. You cannot just pick up anything edible and eat it. You need to make sure that it won't make you sick, and the same goes for your thirst. 
You need to make sure you can access water from your home base, but you also need to make sure that you can easily clean that water. The world itself is harsh, forcing you into unforgiving temperatures of extreme heat or extreme cold, which beyond the consequences of just being hot or cold, can also easily make you die of dehydration or hunger, respectively. The combat itself is probably the most challenging, however. With bleeding or contracting diseases as consequences for taking hits, rare medical supplies unless you change that in the game settings, and then of course, you can't forget the relentless and endless amounts of enemies. All of that plagues you while you must try and prepare for the coming horde on day 7. There is no doubt that this game is entirely built around its survival. Although the survival aspect can also heavily be edited and changed in the settings of a new world. As far as gameplay mechanics themselves go, this is by far the most malleable game I will talk about in this video. Now the crafting of 7 days is nowhere near as exciting. The physical structures you can build are blocky and seem like Minecraft wannabes, and building structures can be very costly and very time consuming because of how reinforcing the blocks works. You can technically build exactly like in Minecraft, except it would take much more time and effort in survival, and even with cheats active to minimize the building time with your infinite resources, you still can't fly like in Minecraft's creative mode, so maneuverability is also an obstacle. Point is, the game isn't built to be a creative building game. The point of your structures, of course, is to provide you protection from the horde. The weapon and armor crafting is really no different than any other game. You click and it builds if you have enough resources, and if you don't, then it tells you you can't build it. However, there is a bit of uniqueness to the gun crafting specifically. Adventure is also not where the game shines through. Even in the random generated worlds, the different biomes only serve to give you a different environmental challenge and a different vibe, really, as the landscape is usually very similar in all biomes with only small hills and flatland, maybe a small mountain, a cliff, or a body of water if you're lucky. I believe there is a story to the game, but it does not seem very intriguing to me and is most certainly not the focus of the game. I do give it some points in a progression system, both because of the progression system of trying to set up for a horde, and because of the level up and perk system. However, the perk system is nothing too special, it's pretty basic. Not that that is necessarily a bad thing, the point is, is that it simply serves the purpose of making survival more fun. Everything else does in this game. You build and you go on adventures in this game only because you want to survive. Now if you enjoy other aspects of the game, that's fine, I'm not saying that you can only enjoy the survival, but if you're looking for beautiful and vast exploration or a space to build whatever you want to, you would be better off playing a different game. Next up is a game I've already talked about on this channel, but not with this same categorization. Subnautica, which I don't want to influence your opinion too much, but this game is freaking incredible. Regardless, I'm here to talk about its mechanics and not how good it is. Subnautica is a sandbox survival game primarily based around adventure. I have an entire playthrough of this game on my channel and I reviewed the game afterwards, so if you're interested then after this you should go check that out. The main driving force behind Subnautica is its adventure. Hands down, the most prominent game mechanics are exploration and story. Subnautica thrives on curiosity and makes you want to see what's around the next corner or what lies deeper in the oceans of planet 4546b and it also thrives on the curiosity of what comes next in the story. The storytelling of the game is excellent. When you first start the game, you might not know that there is much of a story. You might just wonder why your ship crashed. But by the end, you'll most likely be invested in the outcome of the story and be very invested in these characters and creatures that you didn't even know existed until halfway through the playthrough. And there is always more story around the corner, and if you want to dig deeper, there's almost always story there to find. Secret hidden messages from past people who crashed on the planet the storytelling is absolutely excellent. Building is not a strong mechanic in Subnautica. When it comes to building things in your base's replicator, there's a lot that you can make, but you wouldn't even make half of it if you didn't need it to explore deeper or progress the story. And building a base is fun and serves its purpose perfectly for having a home base to explore from and live on, but it provides little for anyone who wants to build whatever they want to in a game. Survival is definitely a big part of the game, but it's still not the main driving force behind the game. In the beginning, you might be worried about whether or not you will survive, but once you have a base set up and your food and water under control, you won't be challenged anymore. Surviving in Subnautica can be challenging in the long run, but only if accompanied by exploration and continuing the story. Combat is not very prominent in the game unless you choose for it to be. Yes, the option is there, but as a weak little human just trying to get off of planet 4546B alive, typically fighting your way out of the situation is one of your last resort options. The world itself poses an obvious and constant challenge of running out of air to breathe underwater, being able to go deep enough without being crushed under the water's pressure, or having enough power in your vehicle to get where you need to be and back alive. But again, none of that would be a challenge if you didn't want to explore and go deeper or complete the story of the game. And of course, that only makes sense. Being a game that is designed to be an adventure of exploration and experiencing a wonderful story, it only makes sense that Subnautica would consist of mechanics that favor the adventure. 
The same goes for Seven Days to Die with its survival. If the aim of the game was in fact to have a challenging survival experience, then it only makes sense that the other game mechanics would support and fall in line behind that. And the same goes for Satisfactory, which is the next example. I'm only going to briefly talk about Satisfactory because I already have a 16 minute long video breaking down the entire game that I posted two weeks ago, so if you're interested in hearing more about the game, then check that out. The summary, though, is that everything in Satisfactory falls in line behind its building. It is a game primarily about building, and in a very interesting way. But again, for more on that, go check out my video from two weeks ago. The survival is practically non-existent besides the combat, which is kind of lackluster and is more of a support for the adventure side of the game, being there for the experience of being on an alien world. Speaking of the adventure, it is stronger as there is a decent bit to explore. However, there is little story and progress is specifically achieved through building factories, which just loops back to the building mechanics. The desire to build a more efficient factory is the main driving force behind Satisfactory, so if you like building and crafting mechanics the best, then Satisfactory might just be your thing. Minecraft is balanced between all three mechanics. Seven Days to Die is survival-focused, Subnautica is adventure-focused, and Satisfactory is building-focused. There are lots of complicated combinations of all the mechanics I mentioned in this video with games that might equally favor two of the categories but neglect another. These are simply the best examples I could find of games that specifically favor one area. There are way too many sandbox survival games that I know a lot about to talk in depth about in this video, and there are even more that I don't know much about or don't even know exist. So this video is to start a conversation, so we can show each other these games and so anyone joining this community can easily find games in this genre that match their interests. So as I'm sure you've noticed on screen, this is my chart of information for all the sandbox survival games that I know a decent bit about. You can see listed after the names of each game the categories that I define this game genre by, in order of most prominent to least prominent. Then in the parentheses after each of them, you can see the specific game mechanics involved, also listed from most prominent to least prominent. Finally, any mechanics or categories joined by the AND symbol instead of a comma are, in my opinion, equally prominent. For those of you on phones who probably can't see this incredibly small text, this entire chart is down in the description, so if you do want to look at it, then just go down there while I'm talking. Hopefully these lists of the most prominent aspects of these games will help out anyone who's looking for a sandbox survival game to match their interests. There's so much more about each of these games that is unsaid here. But depending upon when you see this video, there's a good chance that I have already done a review of the game on this list that you might be curious about, because I plan to play and review almost all of these games in the future. Also keep in mind that this is just my personal classification of these mechanics and is not factual, meaning you might play one of these games that get a different impression than me. That is why this is just a conversation, of course. If your opinion differs from mine or you have some games you'd like to talk about that I didn't list here, please comment for others to see and join in the conversation. Also, I encourage anyone who wants to to use the same categorization and listing that I did for this video if you want to talk about a game, so that anyone who has watched this video can easily see the basic focus of the game you're talking about. Also, if your opinion differs, feel free to recreate any of the listings that I have here for games that you also enjoy, because it would be great to have more opinions in the comments. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, then consider liking it, and if you want to see more content like it, then subscribe to stay up to date on my content. I hope you did enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.